We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to the Freak Show. I am your host, Bumpy McSquiggums, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be starting up our coverage, our early access coverage of the Iron Oath from Curious Panda Games and Humble Games, releasing into Steam Early Access on April 19th, 2022. Now, this game looked amazing. I've been following them on Twitter for quite some time, checking out their uh, work as it goes through and everything else, and it just looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to dive in. It's going to be my very first hands-on time with the game. They do currently have a demo up, so if you guys want to get some hands on the game as well, you can go check that out. And yeah, we're going to dive into it. A big shout out and a thank you to Curious Panda Games for reaching out to me directly and sending this code my way. It means a lot. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have done. All right. New campaign. Enter the company name. Uh, your title, sir. Company name. McSquiggums. Mercs. We want to do the McSquiggums Mercs. McSquiggums Mercs. Eh, it's fine. Flag sigil. I'm not loving or really hating that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. The color just like flat out. Was that a dragon? Is that what that's supposed to be? Or a lion head? I think that's a lion head. Um. Hmm. No axe. Oh, come on, guys. All right, developers, I task you with adding the 13th flag sigil. I need an axe or some crossed axes or something. You, you, you got to represent the axe lovers out there. Like, we need it. Swords are great. Axes are better. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I do like the colors, though. Ooh. I'm going to go with that. Like, background color. Oh, background design. I didn't particularly dislike. Um, ooh, that's pretty good, too. Can I get something where there's like a... Oh, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with number four. I won't be able to completely do this. I can't do... Oh, wait, wait. Can I get a blue and a black? Is, is that a? Is that an option? They have like an orange and a black. There's a blue and a white. Oh, they don't have... Oh, wait, oh, all right, hold on. There's a solution to this. Sigil color has to then become the dark blue if they have it. Uh, I don't really have a nice dark blue. Yeah, I'm just trying to recreate my own symbol. It's fine, or my own, uh, you know, color scheme. That's pretty close. I mean, I, I would have liked a more vibrant, yet still somehow darker blue. It doesn't really make a lot of sense with what I'm saying. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, skip opening. No. Iron Man? Nah. Choose difficulty. Alright, what do we have? We have Adventurer. Okay, so Adventurer is... Is that the default one? Let's see. Recommended for those new to the Iron Oath or turn-based tactical RPGs. The best kind of RPGs. I'm just saying it now. A good place to start if this is your first campaign. While still a challenge, there will still be more opportunities to recover from the few setbacks. All right. Start with 1,500. Wow, the music really ramps up. Start with 1,500 gold ducats or whatever it is. Uh, fewer enemies that have less HP than other difficulties. In dungeons, new time mods every 20... I don't know what that means. Sounds interesting. Battle Hardened for seasoned veterans of turn-based tactical RPGs. If you're looking for a challenging gameplay experience, then start here. Expect tougher encounters and harsher penalties. Start with 800 monies, tougher enemies, and more of them. Injuries recover at a slightly slower pace. In dungeons, new time mod every 16... Warlord, this mode is for those that have already mastered combat in the Iron Oath. Expect to lose many mercenaries with even the slightest of mistakes. A significant challenge awaits your company. Start with 500 strongest enemy encounters to battle. Uh, injuries recover at a significantly slower pace. More elite enemies during higher difficulty missions. Every 14 for the time thing. And then we have custom, which is nice. It's nice to have the ability to do whatever we want to do. I'm here for it. I think I might just start on Adventurer. It feels like this is probably the overall recommended for people playing it for the very first time. And while this probably is more along the lines of what I should be doing, it's just tougher enemies and more of them. I, I want an easy time while we're in early access. If I, if I get the, the idea of the concept down really well, and it's fairly simple for me, hopefully that's the case. Don't know. We'll see. 
Uh, if, if that is the case, if it is fairly simple for me, then I am going to be looking forward to, uh, when the game fully releases, uh, diving into something a little bit more complicated. So, let's get into it. Alright. In an era all but forgotten. Oh, thank... Oh, I love you. I love you developers so much. Oh, this is a glorious thing. I don't have to... And then still not get it finished in time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Every game developer in the entire universe, if you're not going to have your lion's voice acted, give me the ability to skip ahead when I need to skip ahead. Do not auto-advance dialogue. I, it makes me want to die on the inside and kill people on the outside, which are two things that I don't want to do. So don't do that. Do this. This is great. In an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity in the heart of a Kalem. However... An unknown cataclysmic event plunged the world into a dark age. History was lost to time, and so too were the gods. In their absence, a rebuilding humanity was left to contend with the emergence of a great being of darkness from the void. Every few decades, in an event called the Scourge, the dragon's arrival would bring death and disease to the land. Those afflicted by the dragon's blight would lose their minds and bodies, as they slowly became abominations of flesh and outcasts to society known as the Blighted. Also, totally let me read this in my narrator voice. I got a few of them. I will read this opening for you, if you will let me, developers. I'm just saying. In, in an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity in the heart of Caleb. I can do it. I, I've got others. Just, just hit me up. I got this. Despite centuries of effort from the Vanguard Order, the realm's greatest heroes, no lasting victory against the dragon could be achieved. Humanity has now come to accept the inevitability of the Scourge as part of life. Enduring, or in some cases thriving despite it, with whispers of an impending Scourge circulating, you and your company find yourselves in a burial crypt not far from the city of Andalon. A simple retrieval of smuggled supplies, or at least that's what your employer had promised. Something along those lines. I, I would tidy it up a little bit. I'd do a little, little more consistency, you know, if I was doing it, you know, for real. I'm just saying. I, it's one of my goals, guys and gals. Uh, voice act a trailer again. Or, you know, get my voice in the game. Maybe become a character in the game. And, you know, in tactical turn-based stuff, that's what I'm after. So I'm just saying, you know, you can make me some one of your random uh, dudes that you pop up here. I'd be down for it. I'd love it. That was awesome, by the way. Damned grave robber, stay sharp. No doubt his companions will have heard that. Everyone stands still. Tensions rise as they grip their weapons tight and scan the room for further hostiles. You hear a muffled shout from someone in an adjacent corridor. They're likely directed toward their now deceased associate. The sound of quickening footsteps soon follows, and three figures burst through a doorway at the far side of the room. I like this, guys and gals. Again, nothing advancing on its own. This is glorious. This is how every game should be. Behringer. Shit, we, should I go out and alert the others? Yurik shakes his head, eyes fixed on the enemy. No, no time for that. We've no choice but to fight. Begin combat! Oh, I've been waiting to play this for a while. I'm, I'm pretty excited. All right, Wazd and Mouse 3. Got it. All right, we got an archer. We got two little... Oh, oh, okay. We got two little uh, axe boys as well. Ooh, it looks so good. All right, on their turn, each character can move as many hexes as their movement stat allows. By moving into a green hex, they can still perform an action afterward. I like that. That's That's been a good... What's the word? Uh, advancement in tactical turn-based strategy games. The You can move here and still do stuff. Uh, hex coloration and, and and denotation. It's it's a really good thing. So yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. To cover more ground, they can sprint, but they will end their turn. So you can yeah yeah. So uh, par for the course. And again, this is like stuff that has been iterated and improved upon over the years of games like this. I I approve. I approve. All right, what else? You can swap places with an ally uh, moving by moving onto their location. Ooh, setting up attack and for getting out of harm's way. I like that a lot. That's really, really nice. Okay, by holding shift, you can draw a custom movement. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm, chef's kiss. I like that, so I don't have my guy randomly run into flaming traps and stuff. This is great. 
Uh, to undo the movement, I like the undo movement as well. It's definitely a thing that should always be there. Click the undo button on the hotbar or press the E key. If you take damage or trigger a stage hazard, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Let's move the court because, you know, you don't want to go up and go, oh, that was a dumb attack. Whoop! And just rewind the chart. That makes no sense. So I, this is perfect. This is great. Let's move the storm collar into cover by clicking the left mouse button on the indicated hex. Sure. All right, you're the storm collar. Beringer Doonfirth. If you don't have a desirable action to perform, you can delay a character's turn until the end of the round by hitting wait. Perfect. I love a wait command. Alternatively, you can end a character's turn by using the guard action, which provides a temporary bonus to defense and evasion. Click the wait button to delay the Stormcaller's turn. All right, now here's my, I will say, question. Here's how I'm wondering how they decide to do this. Because I feel there's a right way and a wrong way to do a wait command, all right? So to me, and again, this is a personal preference, and I think a lot of people will agree with this, but I could be wrong, so feel free to sound off in the comments if you don't like the way I'm going to describe how a wait command should work. I don't know how they do it, I, I'm curious to see, but we're gonna go with the Heroes of Might and Magic concept or idea. They do it the correct way, in my opinion. When you wait in combat, the, so say the person who's the fastest, clearly here it's this, this uh, Behringer, character right Behringer moves first is first to act if they wait in combat in my opinion they should be the last person to go out of the entire turn so say say there's only these three people these two enemies and Behringer if Behringer goes and then moves and waits or just waits in general it's it's interesting that you can move then wait by the way I, I do like that but it's an interesting uh, mechanic and then say this guy, and then the archer. We'll say the archer's the other one. So then you have the outlaw enforcer and the outlaw marksman. So say the enforcer moves first, and then the marksman moves second. And they both move and wait. So they're all in the same uh, position. They have all have moved, and they all have waited. Then when everybody is moved at that point, say that just those three people, then the people who have waited get their chance to move. It should go in reverse order at that point. The archer... Then the marks are sorry the the marksman then the enforcer and then this should be the last person to move the fastest should be that way they can get a double move at the start of the turn it's just much more technical like they're waiting and picking their spot they're the fastest they should be able to do that most games don't do that most games go they waited first they get to go first it still works i'm not gonna be mad at it if it's if it's that way it's just not the ideal way so we'll see we'll see i said i'm, I'm very impressed with everything i've seen so far a lot of things I really, really like. I can't wait to see how this works out. I like that they have all of the hotkeys clearly visible there. I love the art style. I think it's great. Your character and like just the ambiance too. It's not just the art style. It's like what they're doing with. Uh, we're in a tomb. We're in a crypt here, and it's you know it, it feels like that. It's dark. It's kind of gloomy. It's a bit creepy. You got like skulls here. Like I really like it a lot. Your character's abilities have limited number of charges, interesting, available, so it is important to plan wisely and use them effectively. Charges can be restored by camping, oh, or by using certain provisions. With the enemy advancing on us, we can set a trap by using the uh, Pyrolancer's Return to Cinder ability on the indicated hex. Huh. So, okay, so you have to basically, or essentially, rest between combats. To replenish your skills. All right, so I guess this is, this is our boy. Uh huh. Click on that and move that there. Now, do you think he can? Oh, here we go. The archer's moving up. Ow! That was a lot of damage. Ha! Ah, fool. Uh, as you can see, it is important to pay attention to any potential hazards when positioning your units. Yep. Some abilities are able to push and or pull targets by forcing targets into obstacles and terrain. Oh, you can just flat out kill them that way? <gasps> That's a gr Oh, wait, 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 there was a lot of damage done. I didn't kill her. That's cool, though. I really like that as well. By forcing targets into obstacles and terrain, you can inflict bonus damage and other harmful effects. Move the Pugilist into position and use his Crescent Wave ability to push the enemy into the pit. Oh, you know we gonna wait. What? What pit? There's a pit? 
What? Oh, is that a pit? We always walked over a pit. Oh, no. Present wave. So we can hit two, right? Yeah. <laughs> so good. And now he's stunned, too, I believe, right? Oh, what did it say? It said keep Behringer something. That was a little bit too fast for me. I don't mind stuff like that going by a little bit. Not like going by automatically, but I'd like it to stay a little longer on screen. Again, these are small little things. All right, move our, our person here. The Zok, the zone of control. Uh, every character on the battlefield exerts a zone of control over hexes adjacent to the position. A unit cannot leave. I like this. This is the right way to do it. Uh, a unit cannot leave this zone without suffering an attack of opportunity from their foe. This mechanic helps to lock down enemies and prevents them from reaching more vulnerable characters. All right, so what that should mean, and I, I can't test it right now. Um, hold on. That should basically mean that you can move inside of the zone of control. So if you want to, like, get further to the back or whatever the case is, in theory, you should be able to move to do that. But if you try to step away from the enemy and leave that zone of control, at that point, you start getting mollywopped and hit. I like it better this way than the alternative of once you're in the zone of control, if you move at all, you get hit. Uh, some games do that. It still works. It's okay. I don't like it as much. This is the way I believe it works here, the way I described in the beginning. And I think this, this is the way for sure that I prefer. So we'll see. Each character has a basic attack, which has unlimited uses. Nice. While unique abilities are guaranteed to hit their target, basic attacks are subject to evasion and accuracy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's fine. I like that's That's a good blending of two things. That's good. Perform a basic attack on the enemy by hitting the left mouse button. All right, okay, okay. And it tells you the chance to hit right there at the top, uh, 82 and a, whatever a defense 10 is. I don't know what that means. We'll figure it out, I suppose. Wait, left click? I am left. Oh, I gotta hit the attack first, okay. You have a clear view of that archer. Take him down, see? That was a little bit longer, I like that. Most attacks and abilities are subject to a line of sight, check. When targeting a red eye indicates that there is no line of sight, while a yellow eye indicates a partial line of sight. I love line of sight. That's awesome. Large obstacles such as pillars can block a line of sight entirely. When a character has no vision of an enemy, they are unable to directly target them. Makes sense. Smaller obstacles such as barrels, crates, or, or character will potentially obscure line of sight under the right circumstances. Sure, sure. The target is partially visible, will receive 50% less damage from attacks. Okay, kind of makes sense. By taking cover directly behind a small obstacle, you can look over the obstacle and gain full vision. Okay, yep, that also makes sense, while remaining only partially visible in return. Yep, 100% agree with all of that. The Stormcaller's Conduit ability can devastate a single enemy from range, but it does take a few turns to channel. You can see where a channel will finish by looking at the blue indicator arrow on the turn order. Uh, select the conduit ability and target the enemy archer. All right, so right now we are, is it left to right? It is left to right, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it is anyway. I'm pretty sure. All right, you got shot. Did he negate any of it with his weird armor thing that he's got going on here? Like, I don't know what these uh, symbols are and these numbers are in here. What is the 67? Maybe that's their attack? I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Conduit 3. Oh my god, that's 280 damage is what I think I'm reading there. Target a single enemy and channel for 5 turns. Oh my god, that's so much. Oh, 5, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Each, each time a character moves, it's 5 turns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Yep, and that would put it right after there. Okay, and then we got to go for the archer. The archer's going to get an attack off before we get to do this, though. He's actually going to be able to move pretty quickly. With the nearest enemy stunned, the Pyrolancer can safely move past their zone of control without incurring an attack of opportunity. Also excellent. Attacks of opportunity can be avoided by using abilities that incorporate... Mo incorporate movement or utilizing the swap action let's aid the guardian and sprint to engage her target oh he won't be able to move that's brilliant i'm not sure i would have thought to do that wait i say that uh wait do we have a larger zone of control with him because we're not engaging we're just moving here oh 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 up there okay we're engaging that one 
Well, we ha we'd have to because we can't zone of control. And we just got shot in the face, which is not great. And then we got attacked. All of those are bad things for him, but might have made it a little... E oh, that was devastating. Finish him off. Was it Claudman? Claude Moon? What's his name? Claude Moon White Claw. All right. Basic attack should be more than enough. Oh, this is this is a very satisfying game. Just the, the way the combat looks, the animations, it's so good. Your pugilist has killed an enemy and gained morale. Morale is displayed by the white bar on each character's portrait. It represents their mood and attitude toward the current mission. Oh? Oh, that, okay, that's, all right. Morale is gained and lost through various combat triggers. Landing a killing blow will increase morale while suffering a critical strike from enemy will lower it. Okay, okay. Consequences of low morale will take longer to recover from a mission and will also lose loyalty toward the company. Oh. Targets are considered flanked whenever you occupy opposing. Yep, this is why it's important to have that zone of control movement that I was talking about. All attacks against flanks target flank to targets deal extra damage and cannot miss. I like that too. Let's move the guardian into a flanking position to attack the enemy. All right. It is as I said. You can move anywhere inside of the zone of control without incurring an attack of opportunity. That is the right way to do it, in my opinion. That is how it should always be. I really, really, I think I'm a hundred percent on everything that I like. I think is a hundred percent in this game right now. The only thing I don't know about is weight, the weight command. It's the only thing that I'm not entirely certain. And since this isn't like a true everyone moves, everyone moves turn order system, this might be a speed based one. It might not matter at all anyway. It might just delay the turn, you know, 50% initiative or speed up or whatever. So it might not even matter. Whereas in like Heroes of Might Magic, for instance, a turn is everyone on each side moving is one single turn. And then everyone on each side moving is the second turn. In this case, I don't think it it works that way. I think there's going to be times where people can move twice in a turn, maybe. Well, we'll just take a look up here. We got we got Yurik moving before this guy. You got Yurik moving before this guy again, but then he's not here in the next one. But he might be. He might be. Don't we have a? Don't we have four people? We do. Why do I only see three people up on the on the thing? Oh, one, two, three, and then four. Okay, one, two. Huh. So it's Behringer that's really, really delayed now. Or will be delayed. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out exactly how it works. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm kind of... I'm trying to grasp all the concepts of what we're doing. And at the same time, I'm also really, really enjoying it. And I'm trying to figure stuff out. Maybe a little too much? All right, is there a, oops, is there a thing that tells me the how do I, how do I cancel out of a button that I pressed? Like I pressed 1, is there a way to not have one selected? Oh, all character gear comes with a durability rating. The if you use the gear will eventually break and turn into scrap if an item loses all durability while on a mission, it will not break until the mission's complete. Oh, I like that at least. Okay, so even hitting escape here Right click doesn't do it. Q E R nope. So I'm now tied it could be uh, based off of the uh, tutorial as well. But it looks like I'm now tied into 100% attacking. I wanted to see if there was a way of indicating range. It looks like up to 5 might be the range. I don't know. It's fine. Let's finish this up. I know I'm taking my time. I'm really diving into the game. And I guess we'll say I'm critiquing it, but I'm just really loving on the game, really. I just really enjoy the way they've done literally everything. Restore 200 health. I don't think we'll be using that. All right, and then over here, killing blows, damage dealt, damage taken, and healing dispensed. Nobody healed anybody. Behringer got two kills. Claude Moon got one. And uh, Yurik took all of the damage in the world. Okay, uh, and then E is loot all. We'll definitely do that. Yurik sheathes his weapon, gazing around the room to make sure all are unharmed. Everyone all right, then? Uh, Salini gestures at some blood on Yurik's arm. Never mind us. You've certainly looked better. 
Yuri glances down his injury and scoffs. What, this? He wipes out the blood, making a smeary mess of it. Another time won't heal. I'll be fine. You turn as a familiar voice rings out distantly behind you, though the words are unclear. Is that you, Vaughn? Vaughn dashes into the room and stops, uh, kneeling over to catch his breath. He looks up with a relieved smile. Glad to see you're all still with us. We heard fighting figured you could handle it, but I didn't want to take the chance. And the others? Vaughn points back in the direction that he came from. Now look. This scrolled, it auto-scrolled, right? But look, you can scroll back up. It doesn't just advance beyond what you can... I love it! Sorry, sorry. It's It's been a pet peeve that's really infuriated me lately. And every time it happens, I, I just I can't grasp the concept as to why they would force you to have to read at a certain pace. Again, if I'm playing on my own, I'm, I'm reading on my own. Absolutely 100% keep up every time with just about anything, any speed that people set. When I have to read out loud, and there's things like this doesn't even have a lot of names that I absolutely struggle with saying. But certain games do, and it's like, and you're like, what? Oh, okay, I guess that's how you say it. And then boom, the other three paragraphs are gone because you spent so much time saying, you know, the 65 letter word for, uh, you know, the castle town that you're going to. So I, again, I can't overstate enough how much I love this. Uh, Torin and the rest are still searching. Surely there are better places to stash supplies, but I suppose those smugglers have little choice. Well, at least we're getting paid well to retrieve them. We've definitely been in worse situations. Or worse situations. Aye, that we have, boss. Was just hoping that my last job would be free of surprises. Yeah, I can't fault you for wanting out, but I wish you'd reconsider. Ron smiles faintly and places a firm hand on Ur and Yurik's shoulder. This life takes a toll, my friend. I've seen more death than any man should. His face goes dark for a brief moment, remembering all the friends you've lost. Your trusted advisor, Alaric, steps out from beside you with hands raised, bringing a halt to the conversation. All right, now. There's plenty of time for talk later. It's going to take a while to scour this place, even with the others' help. All right, I better get back to Torn and the rest before they find themselves lost. Watch your backs, there may be more of those thieves in here, or worse yet. Von looks back over his shoulder, nodding in acknowledgement. Let's get moving, continue. Oh, I did I did really drag this out. I apologize, guys and gals, but I had a, I had a blast with this. It's a lot of fun. I'll definitely do a follow-up uh, video of this, maybe another one. I might, I might do like a two to two to five episode miniseries, and then we'll come back anytime there's big advancements. I'm looking at what I see now and how everything's kind of panning out. I would, I would imagine, could be totally wrong, but I would imagine that this is not going to spend a tremendous amount of time in early access because it already looks and feels really, really good. They've got pretty much everything 100%. The one small critique I have after playing this, a brief, you know, the brief little bit of time that I've played it, uh, I would like to see... It's an interesting spot for that. It's fine. Uh, usually that would be a little higher up. I don't, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just noticing. Um... I maybe maybe make the writing slightly bigger in here. That's probably about the only thing I'd say. I, I'm always a fan of having the the text just a little bit bigger than maybe you think it should be, because there are people that struggle to read things that are really small. This is an okay size; I can read this just fine. But again, I know that there are people that would struggle reading the small text. So I would say even double might be a bit much, but it might not be uh, fifty to. 50 to 100% increase, somewhere in that range. I don't think it would be egregious. And with the scrolling text that stays that you can scroll back up and read, I don't think that's going to be a problem for anyone. It's just going to make the game uh, easier to keep up with altogether. All right, let's get moving, continue. Um, you know what? I'm going to break it off here. In the next episode, we will hit continue and we'll move on from there. Anyway, guys and gals, I, uh, A plus right now, man. I really, I really enjoyed the game. You guys know I don't generally go through and critique things or this or that. A whole bunch. I just see what's going on. I tell you if I like stuff. And, yeah. I mean, that's basically what I did now. And I pretty much liked everything. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Uh, we've only seen a small part of the game at this point. Uh, just kind of the combat and the way it works right now. Uh, I, I'm a little concerned that I couldn't back out of an attack once I started it. But could be the tutorial. This is what you need to do. And it doesn't want to let you do other options. Totally get it. Uh, so we'll see if that's a, an issue moving forward. But either way, absolutely 100% here for it. 
really, 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 really enjoyed my time, and I'm very grateful that Curious Panda Games reached out to me and sent this my way. This is uh, this is great. And yeah, I'm looking forward to playing more. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to seeing more. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it now. Subscribe, share, like you know the the garbage YouTube demands. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer, the publisher, any of that stuff, down below in the description of the video, there'll be various links for you guys. You can go check out all of that stuff. And yeah, don't forget to wishlist the game if you do like it. It does help developers. Uh, that that should be a universal thing, by the way, for anyone who likes any game that they see that I cover or anyone else covers or they see on Twitter or wherever they find games. They're like, that game looks awesome. And you might not necessarily be able to buy it yet, or maybe you're not a fan of early access, or whatever the case is. Wishlist the game. It it does so much to support a game on Steam that you cannot grasp the full weight of doing that. So do it. Always do it. If, it doesn't matter if it's this game or 300 other games. Wishlist them. It helps tremendously for the developer. The publisher it gives them some clout with Steam and allows them to, I don't want to say strong arm, but... Uh, do more things with Steam. Be like, hey, look, I've got momentum. I've got people that want my game. Uh, I'd like a daily deal. I'd like this. I'd like that. So it does help tremendously. That's it for my PSA, guys and gals. Anyway, that's it. Until the very next episode, I've been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer. <laughs>